Hi everyone, so today I have Tonic Studio's new color trend to share with you guys. It is called Coral Skies. You saw a sneak preview in the craft kit number 61, the message in a bottle. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. So I'm super excited to share this with you. I haven't even opened this box just off the top and I can see a few things peeking out here. We have some papers here. So they did send these items free of charge for my review. And of course, all opinions are my own, and whatever links I'll have in this description box, including for the US and the UK, will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase I am those links. So this is just a gorgeous new, um, again, color trend that uh, Tonic has put together. You know, sent these things so I can try them out with the different um, tutorials and reviews coming up. So I'm just going to pop this off the top. Oh, there's another little paper pad. So we'll look at the papers so you can see the color trend itself. And then um, we'll look at some of the other embellishments and things like that. Oh my goodness. So in the sneak preview of this of the uh, craft kit, this paper right here just, I love it. Flanders Blue Luxury Card is what it says. And you can see it has that beautiful texture. It just feels really awesome. It does have a white core or backing. We have the Sugared Coral. Oh my god. Guys, I love coral just in any value and hue of it and this is so pretty this stuff um, has more of an orange tone but definitely coral and it's just so pretty um, sugar coral and again depending on if it's glitter card or like their uh, specialty cards or their classic card you know this one you get five sheets 250 GSM this one has I believe five sheets also usually in the specialty and glitters it's five sheets in a pack um, coral luster I mean look how pretty Oh my goodness, so this one has pearlescence to it. Um, Double-sided, I should mention on that one. And your glitter cards do have a white back. 250 GSM, again, five sheets. And then 10 sheets of the classic card. This one's called Pure View. See, I wasn't sure if it was a new blue or I usually use a lot of French blue and the denim that they put out. And one's a little bit lighter than the other, but Pure View it's called and is just gorgeous really a beautiful blue and Italian rose again 10 sheets of that of course it's double-sided uh, one side is a little more textured than the other and Italian rose I mean hi <laughs> you can see me there this is just absolutely gorgeous um, again high gloss mirror card at 250 GSM and five sheets of those in those packets packages packets I don't know so I did go through this in the um, craft kit 61 but we'll flip through the coral skies double-sided pattern paper it's a six inch square uh paper pad it has eight designs six of each design um so or of each sheet so on the back side i'm just gonna flip through it this way but you can see that beautiful little blue with like a little wheat or like a little sprig design and the stripes with the coral and that blue just so pretty um I would say, okay, it's 160 GSM paper weight. I wanted to give you that number there. Look at the little dots on that one. It's just so pretty. I love the colors of that. It just pops and it's so fresh. Just like, I can't say enough. <laughs> I love this colorway. Um, so this one has like the little like leaves kind of vines. And this one on this side has blue with like a little not pinstripe because it has a little stop and go, but really, really pretty. And the little like birds. Again, coral skies, very um, nautical kind of feel. And then this side has like, kind of like tonic, I would say the little bubbles that tonic has on their stuff. Look at like this. That's what it reminds me of. But very cute. So that's that. Okay, so what else do we have here? <gasps> oh my goodness. In indigo shade, sweet melon, and pink sands, coral skies, inks. Super gorgeous. Um, I will stamp with these, but they're very true to what you see on the little... Um, uh, covers they do a great job of that so that's really nice but these are oh, so pretty so pretty oh we have some ribbon let's check that out well this one kind of got wrapped on something else oh my goodness oh and this is like a thin okay cool so we have this one this is the moonstone pink double satin which means it's uh, satin like pretty on both sides i'll show you what i mean by that so it's a double face kind of satin and then on the other side it looks just as nice sometimes the other side will have like like little picket, like kind of a, a different look. So there's a double face satin. I'll just take that off. And then this, it's like a little gingham, like this little guy, navy gingham, five meters by five millimeters. Let me open this up, just in case I don't use it, but at least we can take a look. So what I'm trying to say is like there's this little string, and then there's another row of it. 
you can see there. And it feels so nice. This is going to make really cute bows. You can just feel the way it is. It can just make your little bow really cute. Okay. Love that. Um, okay, well, let's look at the washi tape. Cause that's, you know, something else. Um, coral Skies washi tape. Again, that coral stripe here, that beautiful blue, and then the gingham. So cute. Um, a lot of these other items are in bags, so I'll just take them out like this. Oh my goodness, new glitters! <laughs> I love glitters, and I especially love spangle-type glitters, so let's check this out. I'll just pop those. Oh my goodness, love it. Uh, Astral Nights. And this is a sequins. I believe their sequins have three sizes. Maybe you can see in here. Maybe I can poke it out or point it out. So this little tiny one. There's like a medium size one, like in here, and then the larger size. So I love that. Um, and then this one's Midnight Sapphire, and this is your ultra fine glitter. So when I make shakers, I generally don't put a lot of ultra fine in it, but this is the kind of thing, if I had a little glue, I would just dab, dab, dab. You can pour that on there. Or if you guys um, have a glue pad, like for stamping, you can definitely get something like this on there because it's fine, right? And it'll stay on there really nicely. And then this one's Rose Starburst. Oh my goodness, I need piles and piles of Rose Starburst. <laughs> this is so cute. I love that. And there are different shades in there. You can see a little bit lighter and a little bit deeper shade. Oh my goodness. And that's going to be another go-to. Um, we have some... Sorry, I know I'm speaking away from the camera. Uh, dots. I think that's okay. So let's get these guys open. Oh my goodness. You can see everything just looks so pretty together. Ah, didn't quite cut that one, but there we go. Okay, so we have Nouveau Drops. Let's see. Well, they're all different, so I was going to say if there's some that are similar, but this is a jewel drop. This one has, and it says, add dimensional translucent tints to your paper craft projects. So this one's um, Watermelon Wonder, and when it means translucent, it's going to be a little bit see-through. And then this one is your crystal drop, which I would say this is more of like, Sorry, your, this is more of like your original uh, drop, right? So when you use it, it's a little bit shiny because obviously it's like... Um, plasticky kind of uh, add dimensional details to craft projects and this is so pretty this one um, is seashell pink so pretty and then we have dream drops we have a uh, like pearlescent it says iridescent look I don't know if I can show you I have other videos where I've used all the different drops so you can kind of see the different finishes super pretty very peachy this one's called fruit cocktail oh I love that and then this glittery goodness here, the glitter drop, of course has glitter, uh, Velvet Evening, that blue, so pretty. Um, let's see here, oh, okay, we have a couple of uh, different kind of things. So these are the shimmer powders, and shimmer powders are really pretty. You can either just kind of, has like a little squirt bottle top, see, they just came out there, and let's say... I'm going to blow that away. Um, I had a project I'm working on. I can lay down some water and just give this a little squeeze and it just kind of comes out. It's like a very fine powder. Or you can do that first and then wet your paper. Or you can do a combination of both of those things. Wet the paper, squirt that out, wet the paper some more and move it around. And what's interesting is that it has more than just the one color that you're looking at. Like you see this and it looks like kind of pinky. This one's called Fantail Firecracker. And it has all these like orangey and even like... Um, a wine tone I don't know coming out there so we'll see that's very pretty with the yellow and everything lovely we have a sparkle spray let me open this guy up this one is um, pearled blush and I do have this uh, sparkle spray here what you're gonna do is kind of give it a you don't really want to shake it too vigorously because you don't want to get bubbles in there, but it, there's bubbles in there anyway. But just be kind of gentle with it. You can see that Micah's pretty much here and not on this side, so we want to get that really distributed. And then you just spray it around to your project, you know, however you want to use it. Um, this one's called Pearled Blush. I will say, I think in the Tonic Craft Kit 61, there was this one, unless I'm getting that mixed up, but I think that was in there. Uh, the Micah Mist um, in Moonlit Ocean, so just so you know that that's also available again you can see it coordinates but this is what i have i get samples and these are the samples i have to show you guys and then we have a couple of embossing powders which admittedly i need to use more of so i mean you guys 
coral chic. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And look at that with the blue depths. What a pretty name for a product there. Love it. Oh my goodness. So again, you use your watermark inks or you can use colors that are similar as long as it's like a pigmented, uh, like a pigment type ink because you want it to stay wet longer so you can sprinkle this and it doesn't dry up before you sprinkle it. So it's definitely a pigment type of ink that you want to use. And um, it'll just hold it or again, watermark ink, right? And then you hit it with your heat tool and you have that raised beautiful look. And then look at these. I'm telling this coral in the blue is just so pretty. So we have this gorgeous stuff here. We have um, a Nouveau embellishment mousse. I think they're both embellishment mousses. Yes. And again, uh, other videos and lots of, you know, design team members have videos on how to use these guys. You can just take a little amount, use a water pen and brush it on, color with it. Just use it as um, stencil material, you know, with a stencil, just get it on there. There's lots of ways to use these, but this one's called Bermuda Pink. Gorgeous and pearlescent. And this one is High Tide Blue. Look at that. Super pretty. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to do, I think that's what I have to share with you as far as um, the uh, collection here. New trend. I will grab some card bases and things, stamps or dies, stuff like that, and I'll be so right back. I just back. have a white piece of cardstock here. I'm going to score. We're going to make a shaped card. And I did bring out... This memory bookmaker set that I have, it's the base layer. I want to see if it has, uh, yeah, base creator die set. So I will link that if it's still available. But I'm just going to score this piece of paper. Uh, this is a standard A2 size, so I'm going to score it at about five and a half. And I think we're just going to do some layers and things. And a shaker card. So. Let's just so get that scored up really nicely, and it's going to be in this direction because I think the largest die is pretty good size, so let's open this up. I did pull out this die set in case I wanted to put a little something extra, but for now we're going to focus on the card base. So with this, you know, it has the memory bookmaker, so obviously this one doesn't cut the edge. You can definitely use that and then just cut off that piece if you would like for your card. But I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to hinge it in this direction, and it just clears it, so that's... <laughs> Really good. Um, just making sure that that layer up there. So all I'm going to do is this with this guy is just hinge it so it's off the edge so it doesn't cut so that it makes a shaped card. And I'm just going to run that through my die cutting machine. A little tape, and I'll be right back. <laughs> so I feel like I hear seagulls, but I think that's a different type of bird. Don't live super close to the ocean, but close enough. Um, okay, so there's our card base. Looks pretty already. Look at, I love the way the little dots went all the way through. So pretty. So we're going to use that. And then I'm still going to cover this. Um, and you can definitely make this into an easel. All you have to do is just fold it in half there or you know, give it a score and you'd have an easel card or you can just have a card. And I think I'm going to orient it this way. So I'm going to use this guy. And I want a background piece of paper. We're going to make a shaker. So I just want something in the background of my card. Oh my goodness, everything is so cute. Um, I'm kind of thinking about using the dots. Well, you know what? Let me see. Oh, we can go with this one. Let's use this one. So I'm going to cut this before we continue building up um, our card. Okay, so I'm going to cut this one out. Bear back. Okay, so we have this layer. That'll be the layer that's the very base like this. And then on top of that, I want to put um, some framing because we're going to make it a shaker. It's just a really big shaker. And so I'm still going to use this outer one. Now we can actually make the shaker a little bit smaller, you know, however layering, however you want to do your layering, sorry. So we can have these two. So it'll still be on the outside. You have this huge area. Or this layer is on here. And that's a shaker. Hmm. I didn't think about doing that. Let me see what that looks like. So you'd still see some of that, and then this little shaker would be kind of inside of here. You know what? That looks a little more elegant, doesn't it? Let's try that. I was going to make this shaker as big as this, and then layer it with that guy, and they just have this big shaker, which is nice, too. Oh, it's a tough call. <laughs> That's okay. So what I'm going to do is get this. We'll use that one. And so I may not use these at all because it not small enough there. Um, I'm really, you know, I need to use this glitter card. So let's go ahead and grab a piece of the glitter card. And then I'm going to go back and grab some more um, 
of the white paper and do the same thing. So I'm going to show you right now, I'm going to build it up that way because you can definitely just come in here and put foam on the back of this and it's very easy. Um, but it does have like this shape that's kind of like this so uh, I think what I'm going to do is just cut a ton of these with uh, white paper and then just layer them up and I usually do like three or four layers depending on the thickness of your paper um, where is this? there we go and so I'm going to make sure it stays stuck together that way it, it all layers up really nicely so I'm just eyeballing this at this point as far as the way these guys are going to be together like that some really good tape so it stays together. I'm going to trim this down, run it through, and then I'm, I'm going to take the same frame, just pick it up so that these washi tapes keep them together and cut out a couple more layers of just white paper, okay? okay and I'll so I did cut four layers of just white paper, and then uh, one more thing we need to build up our shaker is just uh, a piece of acetate. Now you can just measure this, you know, this frame, and make like a rectangle it'd be a little harder to do though because the way it dips in here and all that so what I'm going to do is just take the die that I need which is the outer die of this set here just remove this carefully and just run that through some acetate okay so I have a piece that's exactly the same size this guy acetate to run through there okay I'll be right back okay guys so um all these pieces that get cut out I mean you can use this for a label or use it later or put it you know somewhere that you can still use these with the rest of the memory book die set. You can even recess something like this, like leave it in the background and have this up on top. I mean, lots of fun ways to play with these guys. But for right now, we have most of our pieces here. One last thing I want to do, because I'm always just like, oh, how about this? <laughs> I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to run it through an embossing folder just to get some texture on it. Like, why not? And hopefully your die cutting machine cut this really well. I do want to show you one thing. If it stays like this, because, you know, acetate's a little bit wonky um, as far as being die cut. If it stays on, even if you get the impression, all you have to do is bring your scissors. I'm not even putting, like, literally any pressure. I'm just going to follow this, and because it already cut, it already kind of pushed into it, it just slices away real easy. So just you can do that and just follow it. It's like the scissors just want to go into that groove, you know? It's very easy. So to finish it off, if need be. Um, so I'm going to run that through, like I said, an embossing folder. Just do something fun, and I'll be right back. Now we have our pieces. So let's go ahead and just adhere this so it's nice and flat, and then we'll do our frames. We'll go from there. And you can apply the frames one to each other and then apply it to your card all together or however you would like. I'm not putting glue too far up because some of this does hang off the very top of my card. So I'm just going to place this on here. like that and then we have our four frames again this is just for the thickness to make the shaker like I said you can glue these together first and then apply them or pop one down and then keep building up from there but I think I'm gonna put them all together up here so <laughs> I'm just going to really get on the edges I'm not a ton of glue but you know enough very inside and outer edge get the next one make sure it's nice and perfect I layered up one over the other and then go to the next one the next one the next one looks pretty good and again more glue very edge outer edge inner edge and keep layering these up just the white pieces okay and so I will be right back once that is done. Okay, have my frames all framed up. Again, nice and thick. So that'll be on there. And then let's go ahead and adhere these two guys. <laughs> I keep wanting to go to grab foam, and I forgot the reason I did the white framing is so I don't have to get foam. I'm just so used to that, you know. And I'll apply it to my acetate that has a little embossing on it. Very little embossing. It's like these little peonies that I put on there. Okay, and from this side, I'm just eyeballing that, and I will hold that down, and I'll be back. Okay, so while that finishes setting up, I'm just going to, we're going to do something like that. Obviously, we're going to fill it in. I'm going to take this little die set and use this little guy as my corner piece, as opposed to that larger one I had first shown you guys. So I think I'm going to take this one. Yeah. 
Okay, you know, I'm going to cut out twice. I don't know that I'm going to use both of them. Because um, I do like maybe the look of maybe that one and then this guy. Oopsie. Make sure you get those tapes off because when you run it through, it'll definitely <laughs> hold on to your paper. Oh, okay. So we're going to take both of these and I'll run them through. Um, the Flanders Blue card, okay? And I'll be right back, you guys. So pretty. Look at that. And then we have this little accent piece down here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and glue those down right now that I have this flat instead of trying to glue them down flat when it's already popped up up there. Oh my goodness. Okay. So these don't pop out and they look like they might, but they don't. They're hold on, they're held on right there. So I'm just going to put a little, little bit of glue. This feels like fabric almost. Really, really awesome paper. I put that like there. And I'll do the same thing with this guy. I'll glue him up here. Okay, guys. So we have that. Yeah, with that little peony kind of in there. Okay. So we can put that on there. I think what I'll do is go ahead and glue that down, obviously. And then we'll glue that top part with our sequins. Again, right along the edges, especially on this one. Because this is where the sequins will be or your spangles, whatever that you're using. And then... Um, We'll top it there. And I think I have a sentiment that will fit right down the center. And we'll stamp it with some of the ink there. Again, embossing, you know, whatever is that you would like. Let's see here. I'm going to hold that down for a little bit. And then we'll add on our, our uh, I was going to say sprinkles, but <laughs> our spangles and things. And I'll be right back. And of course, we're going to use some of our new pretties here. And again, I don't really do the whole um, wiping that down with an anti-static pad, but you can definitely do that or a dryer sheet. And I also don't fill it up super, super a lot because I want them to move. I don't want them just to be stuck there, you know. So we have that guy and then our new blue. Astral Night, so pretty. Oh my goodness. I will say, I do need to take this one apart a little bit. And like I said, I don't really put ultra fine glitter and things like this, but we have those guys. I'm going to take this apart. As you can see, it was manufactured and they're kind of still together. So I'm just going to just crumble them up and get them to be single pieces. And I'll be right back. Just to break it up a little bit, I'm also going to add a little opal cream that I had in my stash. Okay. I think that's it. Okay. So for this one again, Glue right on the edge, inside and outside edge. And again, you didn't have to do this. You could have just lined this area with foam, and you would have all of that. And I'm probably going to put something on it, because I did do the embossing on the acetate. It's a little crunchy, you know what I'm saying? So what I'm going to do about that is just leave something with weight on this to hold that down. See how it's kind of wonky because of the acetate? So usually what I do with that, I'll put like a cutting plate or something from one of my systems and then I'll put the whole machine on top and it'll help keep it down. So I'll be back. Well, that is setting up with a little weight on top. Um, I brought out this older stamp club. I like the I'm so grateful for you or like you make my heart happy. I mean, you're amazing. All these look really sweet that we can just cut and just kind of put on there like a cool, you know, more contemporary feel. So I'm going to use I'm so grateful for you. And then um, this I picked up... Whenever the Stamp Club was first coming out, and I'm assuming it's still available there, it's just the dies that basically help you cut banners and strips, right? So, like, for all the different Stamp Clubs. <gasps> Look at this one! That's really cute! Because it's kind of like this one with friend and love or whatever. But you can mix up the different things. It's this die here. I think I'm going to use this one if it fits. I didn't... Oh, this one's cute, too, with a little... I want it to be, like, crisp and clean since there's a lot more going on. So, yeah, we'll do that. And maybe I'll just cut it from one of these guys. And what I'll do is I'll stamp it in the different colors so you can see the different colors of the inks. So let's just make sure this guy is nice and straight. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That strip die. Or stamp, should I say. Okay, so we have beautiful colors here. Let's start with pink sand since it's the lightest one. Kind of have an idea what that looks like. Nice. It is the lighter one, but it still has a lot of 
nice color to it. And I'm going to Sweet Melon. Again, these are hybrid inks. And it does say on the packaging that actually you can heat set these on glossy or fabric. On glossy surfaces or fabric, which I did not know that. So, good to know. <laughs> and then this last one. And again, I'm just stamping them without a precision press or anything. So, look at that. That one's really juicy. <laughs> beautiful color. Look how pretty those are all together. Okay, so I will choose one of them and I'm kind of tending towards that one. Hmm, I'll go with this. And I'm just eyeballing, you know, up, down, <laughs> centered basically what that would be. Put some tape and I'll cut that out and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I have my card back and now we can kind of play with that and there you go. And then we have the I'm so grateful for you. Oh my goodness. And of course I want to put it right dead center, but you can put it wherever you like. I mean, I kind of like when it's kind of fun too, like off in a space that's not expected or like off to the side here. Maybe that's what I'll do. Okay, so we'll put it there. And then, you know, this has little dots in it. So what we can do is add some um, Nouveau Drops. So I will do that. You definitely want your Nouveau Drops to dry at least a full day. And I'm talking 24 hours before you put it in an envelope, okay? Because they can still be a little bit soft underneath and you don't know that. And then, you know, it gets stuck to your envelope and you don't want that. So uh, I'm just going to hold that there for just a second and then put these guys away and we'll come out with some drops and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so we'll just finish this up. So today, you know, kind of focusing more on the papers and some of the different items that are in here. But a lot of fun. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous trend. I mean, this is... I would say my favorite trend that they have put together. The colors are just amazing. And let me open this little guy up. This little guy opened up. So again, fruit cocktail, really pretty. And I always pretty much start this off on a scrap piece of paper just in case. There's like a little air in here or something. But it looks like it's going to be fine. Okay. I just don't want to go and <laughs> mess up my little dot there. Um, so again, with these guys, you just give them a squeeze. Steady. Uh, start off a little bit off your project. You're not like touching it and then squeezing it. You're just a little bit higher up. And I will just fill in like that little dot. I kind of do that. Stop squeezing. <laughs> yeah, so right now I'm putting pressure. It's coming out. Stop squeezing. And just kind of give it a roundabout. At least that's how I do it. So again, pressure. Stop squeezing. And I think those are the only dots on that one. Just those three. And this one has three also. So I'll just fill those in. Uh, so images for you guys. I'll have links to the whole collection, uh, the new color trend, and um, you can check it out there. So thank you so much, uh, Tonic Studios, for sending these items to try out. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.